Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show where in this video we're going to talk about microRNAs, what they are and how their expression seems to be changing during ageing and age-related diseases. And then we'll use this information to address whether or not microRNAs could ever be used as biomarkers for ageing and be complementary to other methods of assessing biological age. So the majority of the video will focus on this recent Nature Communications publication, Common Diseases Alter the Physiological Age-Related Blood MicroRNA Profile. However, at the end, we'll also look at this, I suppose, relatively recent article that showed that NMN supplementation promotes anti-aging microRNA expression profile in the aorta of aged mice. And so this latter paper relates a bit more to the question about whether or not microRNAs could ever be predictive of biological age and help in the assessment of whether or not anti-aging supplements are effective. So let's start with what are microRNAs? Now, I'm a bit of a biochemistry nerd, and I actually think microRNAs are fascinating, and I know that I'm not alone in my feelings. So what do they actually do then? Well, microRNAs, as somewhat suggested by their name, are RNA molecules, and they act in the post-transcriptional down-regulation of gene expression. Now, that may sound a bit complicated, but what it means is that microRNAs prevent the production of different proteins by inhibiting translation of different messenger RNAs. And the way that this works is that microRNAs are single-stranded and they can have complementarity to different messenger RNAs. And through this interaction between microRNAs and messenger RNAs, the microRNAs can bring in different machinery within a cell that can either cause that messenger RNA to get degraded or can repress the translation of that messenger RNA. Now, I had three awesome lectures on microRNAs. Shout out to Scadden. So if you don't fully follow what I just said, I'm sorry. MicroRNAs are quite complicated. But the simplest way to think about it is that microRNAs play a key role in regulating the expression of many different genes within a cell and therefore they can influence many different cellular and biological processes. The shocking thing is, because they're not messenger RNAs, they're microRNAs, they're often ignored in transcriptomic studies that have tried to understand the ageing process and rejuvenation of aged tissues. And so it's largely uncharacterised what really happens to microRNAs during ageing. But you might be wondering, do we really care what happens to microRNAs during ageing? Well, I think that there are two reasons why we should care. Firstly, by understanding what microRNAs are changing during the ageing process, it might give us some insight into the mechanisms that seem to be underpinning the ageing process and identify new molecular targets. And then the second reason is that what really is needed in the ageing field at the moment are really reliable biological ageing clocks, i.e. methods that can determine the biological age of an individual based on a series of biomarkers. And this is useful for trying to assess the efficacy of different potential anti-ageing treatments. And there are several different clocks that have been developed already that I've covered in a previous video, and these include epigenetic clocks that look at DNA methylation marks, all the way to plasma proteomic profiling that looks at different proteins that are present within the blood plasma. And the reason that these biomarkers are needed is that aging is a dynamic, non-linear process. So in many ways, the more biomarkers we have, the better. So in this Nature Communication study, they analysed the microRNA profile in whole blood samples from 1,334 healthy individuals. In addition, they looked at the microRNAs present in individuals with different age-related diseases. They had 944 patients with Parkinson's disease, 607 with heart diseases, and 586 with non-tumor lung diseases, 517 with lung cancer, and 405 with other diseases. And in total, the number of patients they had covered both sexes across a lifespan of 30 to 90 years old. And now of the 2,549 annotated microRNAs that they looked at, 1,568 of those microRNAs were found to correlate with ageing. Now around 50% of those microRNAs increased during ageing and around 50% decreased during ageing. 
However, when the authors looked at these different microRNAs to look at what processes they're involved with, it was seen that the microRNAs that are increasing during aging are involved in a much greater number of processes, suggesting that the microRNAs increasing with age have a higher functional relevance. But so far, these are just linear correlations with age, and as I mentioned earlier, aging is thought to be a dynamic, non-linear process. And so next, they tried to see if any of these microRNAs had non-linear changes during aging, and they found that 116 of the 1,098 microRNAs that altered with age had non-linear changes during aging. Now, the interesting thing with the data set that they had in this study is that they had data not only from healthy individuals, but also from individuals with different diseases. And so what they found in this study is that the association that we've just seen between age and microRNA expression is partially lost in the different diseases. But if we look at this figure here, you can still see that the microRNA profile for people with these different diseases still changes during aging. And I think it's actually quite clear here but as demonstrated later on in the study, because the microRNA profile changes for different diseases during aging, it suggests that if microRNAs were ever going to be used as biomarkers for different diseases, then there should be different biomarkers for younger people as opposed to older patients. And I think this is a really interesting point that actually extends from just microRNAs, that in the future, using these different biomarkers, whether it's microRNAs, transcriptomics, proteomics or epigenetics looking at different diseases, then future biomarker tests using these different strategies may not only be established for a specific disease, but also for a specific age range of patients with that disease. But what about using microRNAs specifically for a biological age biomarker? Well, one of the interesting things they did in the study was look at the age-related microRNAs and what different genes they're regulating, and then correlate that to known information about age-related proteins. And so this serves as a somewhat validation of the microRNA changes as being important in the aging process. But moreover, a 2017 publication also tried to look at age-associated microRNA expression changes in human peripheral blood, and they developed a linear model that they referred to as microRNA age, that's used 80 of these microRNAs and it correlated modestly with predicted age from DNA methylation and mRNA expression, suggesting that microRNA age may complement mRNA and epigenetic age prediction models. So given that this nature communication study also identified non-linear changes within the microRNA expression, there seems like there could be potential of developing a potentially more accurate microRNA age that could either be used alone as a biological age predictor, or as they say in this paper, could be used in combination with other biomarkers. And then this finally brings us on to the last study that I'm going to talk about today, which is NMN supplementation promotes anti-aging microRNA expression profile in the aorta of aged mice, predicting epigenetic rejuvenation and anti-atherogenic effects. So the aorta is the main artery that carries blood away from your heart. And according to this article, there's strong experimental evidence showing that dysregulation of microRNAs has a role in vascular aging. Moreover, vascular aging is characterized by NAD plus depletion. So what they were trying to do in this study was to try and test both of these hypotheses by treating mice with NMN to see if it could alleviate the changes seen in the microRNA expression. And well, what they found in this study is that it could. But my main point of bringing this study up was to kind of demonstrate that microRNA expression could be used to look at specific tissues within the body as opposed to being a systemic biological age marker. It could be, let's say, a, a biological age of your heart. And I don't know, I've never really thought about it, but maybe there could be different biological ages for your different organs. And so you could have, let's say, a biological age of 50 for your whole body but your heart might be 60, your skin might be 45. That idea has literally just come to my head. But it could actually be more informative to have it for different tissues and then to use different supplements to target different tissues individually. But I think I'm getting a little bit distracted, um, but I think it's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope this video has taught you about microRNAs that I think are super cool. 
and showing you that they do seem to be changing with aging and that this information could be exploited both to further understand the biochemical underpinning of the aging process but also to potentially be aiding in the use of biological age biomarkers. So as always I hope you've learned something and thanks for listening.